What's good, OBT? It's your boy, Obi, back with another reaction. So, we know what's been going on with this two hype situation with Moby leaving and all the juicy details getting leaked out. Now, I recorded a video for Cash, but he doesn't live in the house, so there's not much details to go on. And plus, that video got corrupted. But this is one person I really wanted to hear from. I really wanted to hear from Jesser and. I definitely want to hear from LSK as well. Those are the only two people I really care about listening from. I don't care for Zach. I don't care for Jada. Now, I need, I'm expecting a lot of stuff in this video. I want to see what the truth is about what's been going on as of why Mopey's been going through these situations and nobody's been helping him. Also about this whole owning like half of his channel or something like that, you know? I want to see what's the really like details behind this. Also, what I expect in this video, I need Jester to give me a, a sincere apology and not being a friend to Moki. Like you guys have known each other for years. I don't have friends that I've known as long as you know them. So they should know how to ration these things out, come back together and be like, yo, I don't care if you're not in too high, but I still want you to be my boy. So let's see what we're going to hear from Jester. Because for real, I'm disappointed in Jesser. Recently, Tyler made a video about why he left 2Hype. And in that video, he made a lot of false claims about me and manipulated different events and left out a lot of the story. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys a timeline of events so you guys have context of the full story. And then I'm going to react to every point Tyler has made in his video and respond to them. But before we get into that, I'm not asking you guys to sympathize with me. All I'm asking is that you watch the entire video before you form an opinion on the subject. As a lot of you guys know, me and Tyler have been friends since elementary school. And in high school, I started doing really good at YouTube, dropped out of school, went to go do it full time. I was super successful with it. And in that time, I wanted to bring up my friends. So I taught Tyler how to edit and helped him make videos and then eventually got him to move into the 2 ipad house at the time. And having Tyler in the house was amazing. We were really good friends. We hung out. I was in his videos. He was in my videos. Then we moved to Calabasas for a new house. Still same thing going on. Me and Tyler, we hang out all the time. Like you're my friend. I loved hanging out with you. We made videos together. Just countless videos on your channel, countless videos on my channel. In March, I moved out of the house. And the reason I moved out of the house was because I needed more space. I had one bedroom, but I had multiple employees in person. I'm trying to run different businesses. I needed my own space and it's always been a dream to purchase my own home and that is why I moved out. As Tyler stated in his video, he's been going through an addiction. Now this had been going on for a while, but when I left the house in March, it got worse throughout the year and I never got to fully understand the full extent of it. Later in the year, we were in negotiations with 100 Thieves to sign with them and Tyler was on board with this, but it wasn't until like the last minute of negotiations, Tyler actually backed out of the deal and told us he didn't want to be a part of the 100 Thieves deal. Tyler explained to us that he didn't want to be part of the 100 Thieves deal because of the contract and the obligations that came with it and we said okay you can still be part of two ip you just won't do the hundred thieves obligations and that's what we agreed to bro i don't even know what the fuck a hundred thieves is though could somebody explain to me what a hundred thieves is i don't know what it is for some time but then tyler expressed to us he didn't want to be part of the group either and tyler was going through it mentally at the time going through addiction so we talked to him as a group and we came to the decision that you know go to rehab get your mind right take time if you still don't want to be part of the group when you get back you know think about it for a while you don't have to be part of the group, but don't make this life-changing decision until you get your mind right. Tyler went to rehab and about 20 days later, he came back and there wasn't much communication when Tyler came back. I texted him a little bit, but I felt like he was avoiding me. For example, he came to the house to drop off something for my roommate, Rick, but didn't come inside to talk to me. James came to his door, knocked on it. You wouldn't even open the door to talk to James after you came back from rehab. Shortly after that, your dad emailed us demanding documents. And to give context on Tyler's dad, Tyler- Here's the thing, bro. When somebody's coming back from something like an addiction or anything like that, they're not going to want to come to you. You have to go to them. That's just the thing. They're not going to open up and freely just like walk into your room. No, you have to put that effort in as a friend to go to them. They're not coming to you. That's just if they would have if they wanted to come to you, they wouldn't have to go to rehab. I'm just saying like. You be, should be able as a friend to like, you know, help them through the situation instead of just going to rehab, blah, 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 blah. Like I'm saying, you can talk your, to your friend and they'll understand and you be there with them, you help them. Rehab should be the last option. Just like, yo, if we can't help you, if nothing can help you, then go. But if I can do what I can as a friend to help you, that should be the first option. And 
I already see you. Like, you're not doing that, bro. You're not there. You're expecting him to come to you, but no. You have to put that effort to go to him. Over the years, you've only said negative things about your dad. I've only had limited experiences with him, but you always expressed to me that your dad was a negative influence. As you can see, this email shows Tyler's dad reaching out for these documents. Now, while this was happening, Tyler's dad met with our manager and made physical threats on multiple people in the group. And as you can see, Tyler talks about it in this clip. The reason that Chris hired security was because my dad. I had a talk with my dad and I told him everything that has gone on and my dad sat down with our manager at the time, my ex-manager, and he told he told him and he threatened Chris. Multiple people had to hire security because they did not feel safe. Tyler. I got a question though. The only way I would say hire security, if he was probably threatening to shoot y'all. If he was like, yo, I'm gonna come put hands on y'all. Y'all guarding security from an old man. I'm just saying. If he's coming to put hands on y'all, that's like all three of y'all versus him. I'm not guarding security for that. I'm not scared of an old man. But I'm saying if he was threatened like, yo, I'm pulling up and, you know, I'm coming with stuff. I understand security in that point. You never messaged anyone once apologizing for what your dad did. The only thing you messaged us after that was threatening emails, threatening legal action. We did not give Tyler's dad those documents he requested because he threatened our safety. People had to hire security. He has zero right to those documents that he's requesting. Tyler does. Tyler did not ask for them. It's coming from his dad. He then sent another email requesting even more documents from us. It is a very, very long email and there's a lot of private information. As you can see, it's blurred, but I will read different sections from it. I will look forward to hearing from an officer of 2 Hive Court. If I do not hear back within a reasonable and appropriate time frame based on the fact that my earlier email was ignored, which I explained why we, it was, I will stop all communication and bring legal action on behalf of Tyler Glenn Mopey against all parties mentioned in this email. And Tyler never mentioned the fact that he came at us legally first. If no criminal violations occur, then all being accused will be vindicated and those who have accused with be left to lick their wounds. But if the violations did occur, you ignore this email, this sees the inside of a courtroom. All penalties will be enforced to the fullest extent of the law and no friendly considerations will be given to any party. And then at the end- Okay, if he's coming at you legally because you're withholding information. Maybe, I'm saying you didn't get full detail. Did he ask for that? Like, yo, he probably sent his dad to ask because he probably doesn't want to talk to you guys. Did you guys look further into that? Maybe. I'm saying, you, his dad's probably the messenger. He probably asked for him. You gotta ask more questions. Instead of saying, no, we're not giving you this information just because Tyler didn't ask us. No. I'm saying, yes, his father doesn't have rights to it, but still, he could be the messenger because he doesn't, because Mopey doesn't want to talk to y'all. That could be the situation. End of the email, this is how we found out Tyler was leaving 2 Hype. It was an email from his dad that had legal threats and it said, in closing, I would like to remind you all that Mopey walked away from 2 Hype for moral and ethical reasons that involved the actions both personally and professionally of 2 Hype, of the 2 Hype members and he was not pushed out or forced out. The plan was for when Tyler got back from rehab to tell us whether he wanted to be in the group, how he was feeling, but no, you didn't come to us, you didn't have a group discussion with us, we've had to find out from your dad in an email where you're literally threatening us with lawsuits, Tyler. You couldn't have come and talked to us after everything we've been through. We had to find out through an email. We could have made everything mutual. Nothing had to be a back and forth attack. There had to be no legal action. But no, this is how everything happened. And keep in mind, Tyler- Once again, like I just said, people that are going through things are not going to come to you. They're, that's the last thing they want to do is come to you. You have to go to them. Like I'm saying, if you are a real friend of his, you would have gone to check on him personally, not through text, not through phone calls. You have to go there physically. It's a big difference from calling and texting and being there in person. Everything before we have, we're meeting, we're talking to each other. You come back, stop talking to us and threaten us legally. But in your video, you make it seem like we're coming after you legally when this has been going on for over a month. There are more threats in this email. We replied telling him you are not Tyler's power of attorney, which basically means he'd be able to sign for Tyler, act as if he was Tyler. And what he responded with was a middle finger. 
Then from that point on, all of the emails started coming from Tyler's own email. During this time when Tyler was threatening us with legal action, he was still living in the house. So we pretty much told him like, dude, you have to leave in 30 days. You haven't paid rent in eight months. You're suing your friends and your dad is physically threatening us and you won't talk to us. This was a back and forth email about living in the house. I'm going to paraphrase because it's kind of a lot. He was asking. He hasn't paid rent in eight months. Bruh, he would be gone in two months if he wasn't paying rent in eight months. That doesn't make sense. Information on the lease, he thanked us for that. Chris wasn't living in the house, the washer and dryer were his, he took them. As for me not making any payments on rent for the past eight months, you must provide me with a complete financial breakdown that involves all members of 2 that are leaseholders and subleaseholders and the- Let me see that. Hold on, let me put on my glove. Okay, let me see. Where does it say about the eight months of rent? Let me see. Damn, that's crazy. I'm saying, bro, if you're not paying rent for eight months, you would not be living in the house, bro. That makes sense. Rent due and paid from each to substantiate that I have not completed rent payments as needed. Also, if I'm not mistaken, there was money directly taken from two at court checking account and paid toward rent. Please provide the financial details on that point as well. If in fact it did happen or prove to me that it did not happen. Now, the Two Hype Corporation started Very subsidizing the Two Hype House rent as we were filming a bunch of different videos there. We all agreed on that. We all had to pay less rent. And Tyler, you just never paid rent. And now you're asking for documents that prove that. We're friends, bro. It's a discussion about rent. It's not like, oh, Tyler, I'm going to make a document that says you owe me this rent every month and hold you to it. It's like, nah, bro. Like, that's your rent. Later in the email. No, that's what you're supposed to do legally. When you're living with people, you have to get these stuff signed so you can hold them accountable. They can't just say, yo. I'm not paying because blah, 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 blah is going on. No, you get written paper that says, yo, this is my rent. This is what I'm supposed to pay. If I'm late, blah, blah, blah. These are the, you know, precautions. You get that in paper. You always need stuff like that when living with people. Says, I'd like to add that you emailing three members that are not leaseholders, but only subleaseholders. One, in fact, is not even involved in this matter is unlawful conduct on your part. What he's talking about, we added Cash to the email because Cash is in 2 ip He's been involved in all these legal things too. He's part of the group. So we just added him to the email and he's literally saying, do it again and I will bring legal action against you for defamation of character and I'm not threatening you, I am promising you. Because we added Cash to an email chain, Tyler said this. This is coming straight from Tyler. Cash doesn't live there has nothing to do with cash it's not a two-hype situation it's a house situation i am not threatening you i am promising you and then he said furthermore if you stop paying utilities i will bring legal action against all leaseholders because with subleaseholders it would be unlawful contact to do so we never did that the utilities never turned off mitchell lived there at the time but he actually moved out because he was afraid to run into tyler because of the threats with his dad and everything that was going on legally he moved back in with his parents tyler ended the email saying i look forward to one day hearing from jesse and mitchell what i possibly could have done to make them afraid of me for i've known them since first grade as for zach james and cash wow what can i say they are afraid of me tyler you won't even talk to me at this time we talked about the house stuff. Now back to the documents. Tyler started requesting them under his email. He asked them. So we set up a time and place for him to view the documents, which was at the two wipe house where Tyler was living. And the four hour window we set up for Tyler to view all the documents he asked for, he left the house and he just never showed up. So all of this back and forth about the emails, we set up a time. He literally didn't show up. After that, more time had passed. Tyler stopped sending threatening emails and got an actual lawyer. And now we've been dealing Okay, wait, did he ask for emails in person or through email? Which one is it? Because if he said send them to him, why the fuck would he show up to a meeting in person to look at the papers? No, just send it to him. Dealing with that back and forth. During this time, we won the Streamies Award. It was a really big night for us. And on that night, Tyler quote tweeted it and put L hype except for Cash and Mitchell, they're cool. And then after that, we send you a cease and desist letter because making all of this public is a lose-lose situation for both of us. And in that cease and desist letter, it literally says we want to resolve this in a mutually agreeable manner. None of this has to be online. In your tweet about the cease and desist, you say they're not victims, don't fall for it. Yet you've been threatening to sue us legally for weeks and literally just won't talk to us. And then after that, you dropped your video. It's a threat and actual shit. You send an actual freaking beast and assist letter or whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know what that is. You sent an actual form out. He just threatened to do it.
that's a threat. So what? Threats, everybody does it, but you actually went through with it. Scary shit. Some scary shit. Video painting a lot of us in an extremely bad light. And it's so crazy to me because Tyler, all these things you're expressing in your video, you never expressed to me in person. When you got back, it's like you flipped a switch on our friendship. Everything you said in your video, you never discussed with me in person. But now let's get into Tyler's video so I can- What effort did you put in, Jesser? Come on, man. This is grown people shit. You guys are grown. You gotta talk things out in person. Like, sit in a room, lock the door, talk to each other. Not over text and phone calls. That's not gonna work. And address each point he makes. And getting into talking about everything, um, they sent me a cease and desist letter. So I do need to be careful with what I'm saying because they're threatening to sue me. I've literally only said L hype and I'll be making a video and they're already sending me a cease and desist letter. Like, what does that tell you? Like, they're just. They're willing to do and say anything. I'll be going into a lot more later about that, but yeah, I'm gonna be talking about a lot. Tyler, you saying the only thing you've done is put out a tweet is a complete lie. You threatened us with legal action on November 21st. You put out this tweet on December 12th. You're literally lying and manipulating your audience. You said you have to be careful because of the cease and desist letter. I feel like I have to be careful because you threatened to sue me and your dad. I'm bro, I'm tired of hearing this. Bro, it's a threat. It's not actual paper. I'm saying if you're scared of a threat, then wait till the shit happens, then you know, worry about it. It's just a threat. It's not official yet. You guys made an official cease and desist. Like you have to go to courts through that shit. That is threatened to sue me. And you guys are probably gonna threaten to sue me for this video. But uh, I've just been um completely used uh just a used used and abused uh, like i'm saying bro the last time i was scared of threats i don't know bro i'm not scared of threats until i see actual paper i don't care i assume this is reference to the mopey abuse trend but tyler me and you and the group have had countless conversations talking about the mopey abuse thing but you always told us you were cool with it and you ran with it on your own channel too you kept that trend up on your own channel every hundred thousand subscribers you would do a video of us hurting you tyler and you've always reassured us that the mopey abuse stuff was okay and you did it on your own channel and abused like as Tyler, like everybody just forgetting about Tyler and only caring about Mopey and Mopey showing up for the videos. Everybody just just doesn't care about Tyler, and um, they will they're gonna say otherwise. Like when I put out my tweet, they all just tried saying they helped me out more than anyone, showing texts of support, like all that stuff. But no, I'm not. I'm not having some fake agenda. Like that, like fake agenda that went out with like TD and Lowe's go out there. Like I'm saying the truth. Tyler, I've known you since kindergarten. There has never been a hidden agenda in our friendship. I've known you for over 10 years and you've been one of my closest friends. And I genuinely believe what I said in my tweet is true. I taught you how to edit and make videos. I gave you an opportunity to move into the house and I promised you I would pay for your entire first year of rent for free while I helped you build your own career. And then even after that first year, you would go months without paying me, but because you were one of my closest friends, friends I let it slide and I took responsibility for that and besides the YouTube stuff Tyler I tried to help you become an adult you never had a credit card you never had a credit score we had multiple discussions about Tyler this is what you need to get a credit card this is the step-by-step -step process but you say I don't care about Tyler but I don't want one of my closest friends to be a grown man with no credit score like you literally act like I never tried to help did you want me to drive you to the bank and talk to the teller for you I don't understand I also helped you with all of your videos because I wanted you to succeed alongside me and do this together and Tyler did I only care about Mopey when we all had a get together at my house you got drunk went on the mini ramp and continuously tried hurting yourself and were falling every time I pulled you off multiple times I was so scared and I didn't want to see you get injured as my friend I love you I don't want to see anyone get injured I had to pull you off multiple times but I just don't care apparently I'll talk about bro that's that, oh my God. that has nothing to do with the situation he does not owe you anything yes you gave him an opportunity yes you taught him these things but that doesn't mean that you rule everything he does or you're responsible for everything he does yes mopey is his own man he has to learn these, learn these things on his own but for you jester like that doesn't mean that you have to do every adult thing for him 
teach him these things, walk him through, let him learn on his own. He doesn't have to do these things, you know. Put him in the right direction. Say, yo, if you need to do this, I would advise it. That's it. You don't force him or make him do what he doesn't want to do. If he doesn't want to get a credit card, he doesn't have to get a credit card. It's his choice. You don't, I'm saying, you don't dictate what people do. You can advise it. They take it. Cool. They don't. Hey, that's their thing. That's what they want to do. You, you just don't force stuff on people. About all this more later in the video, but I genuinely feel I've always tried to help you, Tyler, not Mopey, with what you're going through. Yeah, going into each one of the individuals that I have issues with, I'll start out with Jesser because everybody's probably wondering, like, wasn't that your friend since elementary school? It's like, yeah, he was. <laughs> he's gone though. It's just Jesser. There is no Jesse, and um, he's been doing some really nasty stuff that um. I don't ever care to see him again or talk to him again. First of which, that happened more recently, but I'll get into stuff that happened over the year and past years, but, and Chris Chris was supporting this too, And but Jesse saying I'm fighting serious, serious demons and he's worried about me and basically just painting me out to be like mentally unstable because I put out my L-Hype tweet. Like, I can't, I can't describe how I feel about the manipulation and like the disgust for what he's doing. Tyler, the reason I said you were fighting demons is because I didn't want to publicly tell everyone you were going to rehab. I didn't want to publicly say you were going through an intense addiction. That's very personal and it wasn't my place to say that. I also said don't fuel someone who's not okay. I apologize for this comment. It was insensitive. In the moment when I made that video about you, I was extremely emotional. And Tyler, you were going through it mentally. As you discussed later in the video, you talk about how you're drinking, you're smoking, you're vaping, you're hurting yourself. You said these things in the videos. You were going through it. You were fighting demons. Yeah, I've been- But here's the thing though. When you're saying things like that, you that has to come from their mouth. Just say he's going through a lot of stress or you know things like that. You don't say just someone's fighting demons and things like that. No, you're just saying he has his own personal problems that he's trying to figure out. Or, you know, like I said, he's just having a stressful time and he's just trying to figure things out. That's it. Leave it at that. I'm saying you guys got to learn how to word shit. Abusing uh, the sauce, the devil's lettuce. I'm not saying the word for demonetization or whatever, but yeah, I've been abusing that nicotine and in the past year alcohol like really badly tyler i apologize that my words were portrayed as calling you mentally unstable that was never my intention when i said you were fighting demons i believed it was appropriate to say this because i didn't want to expose private information about your substance abuse and tyler you were going through a battle with yourself as you said you were going through a really bad period of your life this year it was never meant to call you mentally unstable at all i never thought that getting into youtube years down the line I would be having my own brother manipulated by Jesser and try to be used against me as a manipulation strategy by him to think to make people think that he cares about me and that he's reaching out to my family to support me like it, it I can't even like it's it's crazy it, I can't I can't I'm speechless I don't know how to form words right now because it's so ridiculous this is my fault i definitely should not have mentioned your mother or your brother in the video that was inappropriate of me when i did make the video it was very emotional your brother called me after i apologized to him do i regret talking to your mom or your brother no absolutely not the reason i reached out to your brother is i expressed my concerns about you hurting yourself tyler there were things that you did that you didn't tell him about and you were hurting yourself and i was concerned as a friend and same thing with your mom that's what i reached out to her about was you hurting yourself because i'm worried about you so no i don't regret reaching out to your family and that's the thing you're not i'm saying you're not in the wrong for calling his family like you've known his family for a long time but putting that in the video that's overstepping boundaries that's the only problem with it you keep the family stuff, you know, you call them, that's cool. You're supposed to call them, you know, let them know what's going on or check up on them. You don't put that in the video. Do I regret putting it online and mentioning it publicly? Yes, 100%. I should not have done that. That was my fault. After I saw Jesse talk about my brother in his video and my mom too, uh, which is 100% not okay with me, um, I texted my brother and this is what he said. Uh, I can't imagine how weird it was for him to be talking to Jesser and like they've never talked before and he's trying to make it out like he was trying to help me by talking to him on the phone and then he just 
said online like he's like it I, I don't even know what to say and Tyler you say I've never talked to your brother before this is simply a lie I've known you since kindergarten he's your brother he's come to the house many times We've done videos together, literally on your channel, so I have talked to your brother before. Yes, I did express to your brother about the hate because I didn't want it to be a back and forth, a lose-lose situation of us dropping videos together. I was talking to Preston about how we could keep this offline, and obviously, as I said earlier, I was expressing my concerns of you hurting yourself to him. And if you meant I had never talked to him on the phone or about your addiction or what you're going through with him, yes, that is true. That was the first time I talked to him about it. That's what he's talking about. You never socially, outside of mopey circle talk to him like on your own hey i'm gonna call mopey's brother that's what he's talking about it's not saying you haven't had a freaking actual physical conversation with him you know the nigga for 10 years of course you're gonna talk to his fucking brother but it's saying like yo outside of mopey being mopey's friend or being in mopey circle you've called him like on your own just to have a conversation that's what he's talking about that never happened because I didn't have any way to communicate with you, Tyler, so I had to go to your family to express my concerns as a friend. In the, the eyes, too, like, he probably just rubbed his eyes and started to just get watery eyes. Like, it's, it's an act. It's all manipulation act. He does not care. He only cares because he wants to uphold his online image. That's all he cares about. That's all they, that's all, all, that's all they, that's all they all care about. That's it. And they'll say and do anything to keep that. Tyler, you said I rub my eyes as a manipulation tactic to look sad when this whole back and forth, like this has been some of the lowest points of my life. This situation is literally the only thing I've been able to think about in the last month. I can't even sleep at night without thinking this. This is extremely emotional, this situation for me. And to you acting like, oh, I'm just rubbing my eyes. What, bro? I've always loved you. And then I get betrayed. This whole situation is extremely personal and emotional to me. I got to take accountability for not being entirely <coughs> open with how bad things were with me this year, but I was open enough and things were visible enough to see that I needed help and Jesse was never there for me. Jesser. It's not even Jesse anymore. It's just Jesser was never there for me. This is a flat out lie. And this one hurts so much because Tyler, I cared about you so much throughout the year and tried really hard to help you. Tyler, I tried my best to help you. I tried to reach out to you. Am I a trained professional? No, you're my first friend that's ever gone through an addiction. I don't know how to perfectly fix it or help you, but dude, I did try. And it's like an example like this text. No worries. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you with, bro. It's all good, dude. Just needs time. Thank you. It's like, I would give you opportunities for you to express what was happening and tell me, but you would just bottle it in inside. I really got into meditation, priming this dude named Tony Robbins who tries to help people like- What I said earlier, bro, nobody wants to do these things over phones, over texts. You have to be there physically. The most important thing is physical appearance. They want you to, they want to feel like you are there, not over a phone, not over a text. I'm saying that's just- Something you learn over time with helping people out and dealing with friends. They want you to physically be there for them, not just the phone call, not just text. You know, you got to be there eye to eye, you know, so you can just feel the emotion. They get their mind together. I sent Tyler a lot of that stuff to try to help him through it because that's what helped me. And I thought, you know, maybe this will help Tyler. Even right here, Tyler texts me that he's going to be in my videos, but he didn't want to record his own. And I was like, dude, you don't have to do that. Just take it easy. And he says, I'll sit it out. And then I ask him, yo, let's go work out. Let's meditate. You know, something good for you. Something that's helped me mentally. Like this is an opportunity to help you, Tyler. And you don't respond. I read a lot of books about mental health and self-motivation. So I would send those to Tyler because that's what helped me from my experience. And it's like, he would say, I really appreciate you sending this stuff to read and listen to, dude. The other stuff like Kevin Hart's book and Chop Wood, two other motivational books. He's like, I want to read and finish sometime. I'm going to be honest. I can't really get behind what this guy's about. I'm really happy it's helping you a ton though. Tyler doesn't really like Tony Robbins. That's okay. He helped me. I tried to send it to him. I reached out to Tyler. Yo, but let's talk one-on-one -on -one soon. Let me know when you can. We're going to figure all this out. I love you. We're all here for you and want the best. Definitely talk soon. And Tyler, like you express things like, oh, we didn't help you clean your room. I'm saying let's talk Thursday. If you need any help with your things, let me know. All you have to do is ask me. When I reached out to you with these messages, Tyler, there was no ulterior motive or manipulation. I wanted to help you. You were my friend. For example, what are you doing tonight? You want to talk things through or just vibe? Like, I was trying to help you, Tyler. I'm sorry I didn't do a better job at helping you. I genuinely am, but I hope you know I tried. When I moved out, I was extremely- Yeah, like, I said, I said this in the cash video that I didn't put out. 
I said Jester, I feel like he has good intentions, good intentions, but just the way he goes at it is just wrong. Like, I know he cares. I know for a fact that he cares. But it's like, just, you got to go about it different if you want to prove more of a point. He's looking for you to be, like, physical there. Like, he knows, he knows you want to help, but it's just like you're not physically there for him, you know? You have to be there. You can sit with him through these things. I know you got your own things going on, but still, putting that just little bit of effort and a little bit of time can make such a difference. 